Hey everyone! Today this video is going to be on a recent happening that took place here in the state of Colorado a couple days ago. And I think the state representatives and the lawmakers for having this happen, I think it's a great step in the right direction. And I also want to thank the people who basically live and let live, and they don't give a damn what other people do. They just live their lives, go about their day, and don't even judge or care. Thank you. I also want to thank the people who are Christian and are Christian and don't judge or condemn or be bigots or anything to other people. They just live their lives and they just live their lives according to the Bible and silence and hum humility just like the Bible calls for. Not like let's go out there and try to win converts for everybody. Let's get in everyone's business. I'm talking about the people who are open-minded and accept the fact that there are other people out there who are different and accept the fact that people don't always want to believe in the system of Christianity. So thank you. You guys are fantastic. And you you are pretty hard to find. Okay, so this video is pretty much for the bigoted assholes out there. And it's on the subject of gay rights and civil unions. Okay. So if I look down a lot, it's because I have a list here, and it's basically just to keep me on track for all the points I want to make. So if I look it down a lot, that would be why. Okay, so let's get started. Point one, the sanctity of marriage. When you people talk about the sanctity of marriage, it's pretty much saying that we will defile it some way, and it's already been done by the straight people who have cheated, lied, and divorced, and all kinds of other shit against their spouse. When they're supposed to be loving toward each other the rest of their lives, so the stereotypical marriage says. If anyone is going to appreciate the sanctity of marriage, it would be the homosexual community, considering we've had to fight day in and day out for our basic rights, and just to walk down the street without getting pummeled on for being different and for just loving who we love, okay? You people, as in the bigots and everyone else who thinks the sanctity of marriage is such a big deal, have trashed it yourselves. You have destroyed it, defiled it, desecrated it quite nicely and just, it's pretty much done. So don't try to blame that on us, okay? Point two, Satan. People who follow the dogmatic religious rules, such as Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormons, Islams, Muslims, sorry, politically correct here, Jewish people, Christians, Catholics, whatever, the people who believe in Satan take the most time to make all this a big deal and pin it on Satan and think everything that doesn't fit in your little delusional world on Satan. It's always Satan's fault. Everything you don't agree with, Satan. My poor little black cat here, let me show you her. This sweet, innocent little cat right here. Y'all will say it's the same. And I'm like, really? No. My, it's, you just stereotype everything. Sorry, I need to get readjusted here. You just pretty much stereotype everything that doesn't fit, and quite frankly, it's tiring. Because, personally, I don't believe in Satan. I don't believe in a monotheistic God either. Yes, I am religious, but not in the way that people would want me to be. And if you watch my other videos, you would know my affiliation. That's not a, the subject right now. So because I don't believe in Satan, and demons, and everything else, I don't have that negative crap around me, nor has it other bothered me, or tried to kill me in my dreams, or whatever you people claim. Okay. Everything that doesn't fit in your world, like I said, you think is of Satan, so I suggest you wake up, start believing the loving God that you supposedly believe in, and stop pinning everything on this Satan character and take self-responsibility for your actions instead of saying, oh, the devil made me do it. Oh, the devil might be talking to me. No. Take personal accountability for what you believe 
for what you think, for what you feel, because it's not Satan, it's you. And this, the Christians, etc., are the only people who seem to have this big issue, and it's just every, almost every sentence is Satan this, Satan that. And I can't tell you how many times I have heard that word and that name. So many times I am sick of it. Get over yourselves and stop blaming everything on Satan, okay? It's not him. It's you. Just step up. <sighs> okay. Point three. The concept of marriage. Religious organizations, the church, nor the Catholic Church, or any type of organization, owns the concept of marriage. It is what happens between two people who love each other, who appreciate each other, and who want to spend the rest of their lives with each other. It is not affiliated with Christianity or any other system. It is a right humans have. Two consenting adults have. Whether it be two men, two women, a man and a woman, whether it be a man and three wives, if they're consenting, who the fuck cares? Okay? Get over that fact. You don't own the concept of marriage. The church doesn't own that concept of marriage. If you don't want to perform a gay marriage, don't. It's your right. You don't have to. But in the meantime, it's a pathetic deal. Anyone who should, who's two consenting adults, sorry, I'm a little fired up right now. If you're consenting to marriage or to polygamy or whatever, I don't care, it's your business, then it's not a big deal. You're not living that life. I'm not living that life. So why is it such a big deal to you? It shouldn't be. Point four. Religious speech. So, <clears throat> people who are opponent to the Civil Rights Bill wanted protection of freedom of religious speech. Tell me why. Why do you want to have protection of your religious speech? We already have freedom of speech. That's why you can stand on a street corner and hold the signs that you hold, or you can be Westboro fucking Baptist Church and do it too. How does does that make you feel better at the end of the day when you go down the street or you go to the store or whatever and you think, oh my god, that person's a fag, oh my god, that person's a dyke, or whatever uh, discriminatory, I can't think of the word right now, what other discriminatory bullshit you have, does that really make you feel better about yourself, lift you up on that godlike pedestal, or just, it's derogatory people. Does that make you feel good when your kid goes to school and bullies that gay teenager or that, wom that woman who happens to be into girls and they end up going home and they can't take it anymore so they kill themselves? Does that make you feel good about yourself? Does that make you feel great about yourself? And they could go out and say, oh, I was uh, practicing my religious freedom of speech. I was being a Christian. I don't think so. And if you think that for one second that's acceptable, you really need to look and just get your priorities straight. Get your shit together, get right with your God. Because that is not okay. It's hate. It is hate speech, and I will not tolerate it if I see it. And I will say something, regardless if I am on the clock at my work or anything. I will not take it. Point five. Protection of rights. So, attached to this Civil Unions, there was going to be a clause, which, by the way, didn't pass, so fuck you all, that basically said people would have the right not to give services to people who are gay, just because of their religious affiliation. So, if, regardless if you're a doctor, if you're a nurse, if you are a therapist, counselor, whatever, 
It's your job to help people. It's your job to provide service to people who are in need and who need your help. Zen. I say Zen a lot just to help calm me down a little bit. And that is not acceptable because if you look at somebody, you cannot tell if they are gay or if they're lesbian. And if they are, who cares? It's not your life. You're not living it. Back to that point again. And again, it's not of your little imaginary character called Satan either. <laughs> so, why would it be such a big deal? Because it's against your so-called morality? Jesus, if it was such a big deal, Jesus wouldn't have not taken the time to not say anything, because he didn't say anything on the subject, nor, by the way, did he say anything about abortion which I'm not going into, but I'm just stating that fact. So if it was such a big deal, why didn't Jesus say anything about it? <clears throat> Point six. Gay adoption. The new pope that I've seen a quote from recently, who I want to punch in the face to be quite honest with you, said gay adoption is, here's that name again, of Satan, and it's a discriminatory offense against children. Really? Okay. How does it, how is that such a bad thing? Two men or two women want to have children to love and support and just to basically have a family with just because they're not interested in the fact that they don't want to be a breeding machine and they don't want to have a procreative purpose. Just because we can't procreate doesn't mean it's not love, people. And so, how is that such a big crime? What about the people who throw that child away in the first place? Did they not care about them? That was ne Did they neglect them? Did they abuse them? You know, why is that such an innocent part in all that? Why is it the gay people are somehow the evil in that situation? And before you go off and say, but marriage is supposed to be between a man and a woman, and there only a man and a, or a child needs a f man and a woman figure in their life. How do you know that? As long as that children's child is fed, as long as they're healthy, clothed, clean, getting a good education for Christ's sake, why does that matter? There are so many decent people in the world who have two moms or two fathers or just a mom and a father. What about those people? What about those particular people who just have a mom or a father to raise them? Why, don't, why aren't you out there condemning them? Oh, it's because they're straight? I don't think so. So, it is ridiculous that organizations such as Catholic orphanages have to feel that's such a big ass deal. My and I'm not going there. Okay. Point seven. When you guys talk about the gay agenda basically what I see that being is that we're gonna get office and make this country sorry for this fabulous No. <laughs> basically okay. Enough of that. Okay. The way that I heard it is people are going to get in office, they're going to throw out anyone who doesn't agree with them, they're going to pretty much just toss their ass out. Doesn't that sound familiar to you Christians? No. Oh my god, here's the real gay agenda. Coming to a theater near you. See them drive their car to work. See them pay their bills. See them watch television. See them actually care for one another. See them take care of their home. See them live a normal life like you do almost every day. That's the real gay agenda. I don't know where that e term even got started or what people are thinking when all it is is some political agenda bullshit thing. That's not the case. We just want our equal rights. Just like you want the right to marry your significant other. I say if we can't have the right to marry, you can have the right to divorce. How about that? You won't like it very much, would you? And recently, 
on the Denver Post, on their Facebook page, they posted a picture of a couple of senators here who happen to be gay, and they happen to be together, who were kissing each other. <gasps> oh my god, two guys kissing each other! How disgusting! Really? Get over it. Is it you kissing that guy? No. What? How is that different from two men kissing? How is that different from two women kissing? Which I'm sure you fantasize about having hot lesbian neighbors next door, hypocrite. And how is that different between two, just a woman and a man kissing? It's, there is no difference. Just get over it. It's just pathetic. All the comments that I saw on that, it's just, like, honestly, if you don't like it, don't look. I don't, I'm not for any form of PDA, honestly. I'm not for a woman and man groping each other in public. And hell, I'm as hot as it would be, I admit, I'm not for two women groping each other in public or two guys groping each other in public. So, it's just, why is that such a issue for you people? And why do you have to bring your little fucked up morality into it? I have no idea. And to put it eloquently, a little quote comes to mind, and it goes, Don't call it part of your faith another way to justify hate. And that's basically what you guys are doing. Just because you don't like a certain something, and just because it doesn't fit into your own little morality and your own little world, you have to hate it. And you have to use God and Jesus and everything else to bring that factor into it. And saying, Oh, it's a morality thing. Oh, it's so gross. How is, excuse me, how is gay marriage affecting your life? How is gay marriage going to affect anything you do? Is it going to affect you going to church? No. Is it going to affect your spiritual practice in any way, besides the fact that you want to take so much time to obsess and be disgusted by it? No. Is it going to affect that your husband or your wife that you lay with in bed and you have sex with every night? No. Well, not every night. That would be kind of exhausting. <laughs> but you get my point. It's just like, why the hell is it such a big deal? Because it shouldn't be. It's just, grow up. This is 2013, not the 16th century where everyone had to hide where people of my faith had to hide. And it's just time to grow up. You know, interracial marriage was legal at one point, and I'm sure the church frowned upon that like they do everything else. And now look at it, it's illegal. It's totally legal. And there will be a day when gay marriage is legal too. So let's, let me play you for just a second here. Let me go it up on my godlike pedestal like you people do. And why don't I try to play God and just see what God thinks? Because that's what a lot of people do when they pick and choose which part of the Bible to follow. So, what if God is trying to tell people, this is not how I wanted my followers to be, and this is not how I wanted my followers to behave towards one another. And what if, by allowing civil unions and eventually gay marriage does maybe that's a message saying that it's time to wake up and embrace the fact that excuse me God is love your God is supposed to be about love and maybe he's saying the reason he's accepting this is for you guys to wake up because half the time all of the people do, and even my neighbor, because we've had long talks about stuff, go around judging people just because they are different. And they go around saying, well, a marriage should be between a man and a woman. Who the hell are you to say that? Again, marriage is between two people who love each other. And I don't know why I have to do a video ranting about this fact, considering that it's such a pathetic issue, in a sense, but then, in a way, it's something that I deeply care about. Because I would love to be able to walk down the aisle one day with my bride and be able to tell her I do. 
and not to have someone refuse to do it because it's supposed to be against their bullshit morality. So, bottom line is, grow up. It's time to just grow up. And if you want to follow your Bible to a T, I suggest that you start... Sorry, someone's walking outside. Woo, air sign. ADD-ish. One of those ooh, shiny moments. Okay, so, back on topic now. Hmm, deep breath. Okay. And being another air sign, I just forgot what I was going to say. Total fail. Um, so, bottom line is, just, it's such a ridiculous thing. I mean, if you want to, there we go, want to follow the Bible to a T, why don't you take your rebellious teenager out into the square and have the people of the, well, it wouldn't be a square so much anymore, but why don't you take all your neighbors and say, hey, my teenager's rebellious. Let's go stone them like the Bible commands. Or what about when you work on the Sabbath day? I'm sure half of you people do. And if you did, you are meant to be stoned. So, if you want to follow everything to a T, I really recommend you read what's on the page of the Bible. And I know for a fact, <coughs> excuse me, that God has commanded that people like women, men, and children, and infants be killed. And I have the verse actually right here. Sorry, let me look it up real quick. I actually have it. I saw it earlier today, so I made sure to write it down. Okay, here we are. 1 Samuel 15.3 Do not spare them. Put to death men and women, children and infants, cattle and sheep, camels and donkeys. Is that the words of a very loving God or what? So, if you want to put someone on trial for pretty much being a murderer and a liar, I suggest, one, you start with God and really read what's on the page of the Bible and all of the Bible and see how much bloodshed and how much filth is really in there. And two, put yourself on trial. What are your actual morals? The only thing that is stopping people from pretty much offing and killing gays is the law. Okay? And that is a very scary and disturbing thought. Because the way people talk sometimes, it's just unbelievable. And I know for a fact that missionaries all around the world, you don't hear about it half the time, but I know there's people in Uganda who kill people for who are supposedly gay and for supposedly being a witch, which is another subject that I've rented on. And this is all done in the name of a supposedly loving God. Now, what's wrong with that picture? All I see is just hatred and bigotry, and it is time for that to stop. I am so through with having to be judged day in and day out because, yes, I'm a lesbian. Yes, I happen to be a shamanic Wiccan. I am an open... I'm open. I'm out of the closet. I'm out of the magical broom closet. I don't have anything to hide. So yes, I get judged quite a bit. And it's just really pathetic. And it's because of narrow-mindedism. Narrow I just made up a word. Yay! And the fact that people can't grow up. So this videos reached about 25 minutes so that's enough bitching for me for today um, I hope you've enjoyed hearing my ranting and raving and thank you for taking the time to watch this video and for hanging in there and I shall see you guys again soon and for all the people out there who are going to celebrate Ostra or the spring equinox next week I wish you a very blessed one so I shall see you guys again soon. <laughs> Even though it doesn't seem like very love and light-ish right now with this video, um, I still wish you all the best. Love and light. Blessed be.